Picture this. It's a cold winter's night. A family is sitting around the stove to keep warm. Grandmom has a cat in her lap. Grandpa's asleep in the rocking chair. And Mom is reading a book by candlelight. A young girl and her friend are playing a game of cards. Now you might think that you're watching a rerun of Little House on the Prairie. Wrong. This was my experience when the ice storm hit our region late January. The setting for our little house was my grandmom's. That Monday, nobody was prepared for what was about to happen. Tuesday morning, I woke up to an eerie silence. The power was off. And when I looked outside, I couldn't believe that most of the branches from the trees were now on the ground. Long icicles hung from each branch. Mom brought over the pets from our apartment, and we gathered the pets up at my grandmom's and took them inside to keep them warm too. When our neighbors had to leave their home, we babysat their cockatiel. Our little menagerie included a guinea pig named Cody, a large dog named Maggie, seven kitty cats, a flying cockatiel, one fish in a bowl, two ten-year-old girls, and a grandpa in a rocking chair. The grandpa was challenging, just as grandma, but not as challenging as the animals. Maggie thought the guinea pig resembled a squirrel she loved to chase, and the bird and cat could have been a real live Sylvester and Tweety. You know, I thought I saw a putty tat. The second night of the storm was even worse. When morning came, we were shocked to see the huge mess the storm had caused. Just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, we discovered our phones didn't work. We felt totally isolated. With power lines and tree limbs covering the roads, the police imposed a dust to dawn curfew. You want to know what saved our family? My grandma's gas cook stove. The four burners heated our small house. And we had candles, lots and lots of candles. Grandmom cooked, and Mom said she hadn't eaten that good in a long time. After dinner, we played games, read out loud, and talked. One night, Grandma broke out the never-before-opened special edition Elvis Monopoly, which, by the way, I won. Thank you. Thank you very much. Even though Mom owned Graceland, Granddad went to bed soon after supper and got up early because we didn't leave the stove and candles burning all night. We stayed warm with layers of clothes and lots of blankets. Now, I'm beginning to understand why people used to go to bed so early and get up at dawn. By the end of the week, we changed channels from Little House to the Waltons. We were able to drive and a few stores began to open. Our phones began to work again and we added the radio to our nightly entertainment. I still don't know how Mom knew the words to all those old songs. One night, she grabbed me up and, tar and started dancing, singing, and acting them out. We ended up laughing hysterically. I think that may be what some people call cabin fever. On Friday, Mom went back to work. I didn't want her to, but she said we needed the money. When she got home, she told me to come outside. I thought she'd gone crazy. My mom hates the cold. What on earth would make her want to go outside? When we got outside, she said, look up. Just look at those stars. You may never get to see the sky like this again in your life. Why, I asked. Because there are always lights shining from somewhere. She was right. When I looked up, I saw more stars than I'd ever seen. Millions of little twinkly lights formed pictures against the velvety black sky. She helped me find the constellations. Orion, Cassiopeia, the Big and Little Bears, and the Seven Sisters. And as we stood there, admiring the heavens above, I decided it was worth being dragged out into the cold. And then I realized I wasn't even really that cold. The storm wasn't comfortable, but my family and I had many enjoyable moments. The experience taught me that even without modern day conveniences, we were lucky because we had each other. Now, I'm beginning to understand my mom's statement. Call me crazy, but I'm kind of enjoying this. Well, maybe, just maybe, people will have to call me crazy too.